Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guest is from Altair. We have Dario Dorella. He is a product manager for the product called Display Manager at uh, Altair. So, so, Dario, welcome to the show today. Thank you very much, Rich. So, so uh, Dario, first, let's start at the beginning. What does Display Manager do? Display Manager is uh, part of the Altair web offering of uh, PPS Works product suite. And Display Manager really is about uh, enabling users to access their applications interface over the network, acting remotely. So you, you are in front of your PC, like I am now in front of my desktop, and Display Manager enables me to access uh, applications that are running uh, inside uh, server farms or e computers that I couldn't post besides my desk. And it's uh, about enabling users to do something with their workstation, with their laptop, they, they wouldn't be able to do just using the local resources. Sure, sure. So, so is it a collaboration tool as well? Also, also. Uh, yeah. I will get to that during the demo that I would really like to show you. Today. Okay, yeah, let's take a look. Sure. So let me log into Display Manager. Uh, and as you see, actually, I could log on also to Compute Manager interface because uh, they are the two products are part of the same framework. Sure. And I will briefly talk later on about how they interact with each other. Uh, what you see on the screen here is the main uh, Display Manager desktop. And on the left side, there are the applications we have access to, and there are a few controls scattered across the interface, and I will get to some of those uh, shortly. But let me launch an application here, which is Hyperview, in my case. Um, so Hyperview is uh, an instrument to uh, load uh, engineering data and to see how your simulation went and what, what has just happened. When I double click it on Hyperview, something happened in the backend framework and I was given a machine with enough CPUs, memory, and traffic resources for my job. And what I'm seeing here is the graphic interface of something which is running uh, in, a, in a machine which is physically in Germany, somewhere near our Poblinden uh, office, I assume. Um, so let me just maximize the working area here. So I'm collapsing, collapsing the toolbars. And uh, I'm loading a model in here. So let's imagine that uh, I am accessing uh, a computing resources from across, and I run a very complicated simulation on a very large machine, on a very large computing cluster that produces a, a large amount of data. Now to download all those data, all the data on my own workstation to post-process it or to look at what's inside would be inconvenient. Whereas what I'm doing now is that I'm loading a model uh, inside my application, which is running in the same place where the data was produced. So I do not need to wait for my four terabytes of stuff to be downloaded. I could just actually stream the application interface to myself. So I'm selecting the model, I'm clicking on open, apply, and what you see on the screen now is actually a data set. It is a, a, a model. Uh, that is a, uh, this is a demo model, of course, uh, that it is run uh, inside that machine uh, some hundreds kilometers from here. And I can actually use this application as it was on my on my desktop. You see now I'm rotating the model. Uh, and uh, it, I could do other operation, but I'm, I mean, I am, <laughs> I am an expert of display manager and, uh, and computing frameworks and, and such. I am not really an expert of Hyperview, but I learned to do a couple of things with, with it, like, uh, for example, looking at an animation. 
so you should be seeing my model uh, actually crashing onto this ball here. Uh, but the, you see that the uh, quality is not so good. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of some artifacts on the graphics, but you, you need to understand that the machine that I'm working with is uh, away from where I am. Uh, and so to uh, cope for thing for this latency and bandwidth, I can just lower the quality so that I can get uh, a fair enough frame rate. So by lowering the, the quality of the graphic of the animation, by lowering the quality of the moving frames to adapt to my uh, bandwidth and latency from my client to the server, I can actually work somehow better with the interface so that I can adapt actually to, uh, to what I have uh, at my, in, in, in my hand actually. Um, and you were saying before, if Display Manager is uh, uh, also a collaboration tool, well, it is. So you see that there is this other user logging into this machine. I could just have him see my session. So my session is shared with success. And now this hit link will see my session appearing among his. Uh, you could have multiple sessions down here. Uh, as many as your infrastructure allows you to have. And I could even, I could even give him controls on my session so that it could uh, actually control my, my viewer here and so that it could actually help me uh, debugging a model or we could uh, discuss and apply modifications to my, to my model uh, while, while actually looking at the, at the same thing. And when we're done, I'm just unsharing the, the session. Oops. Of course, I need to say who I'm unsharing the session from because I could have the session shared across multiple users. What else? Uh, I think this is a pretty good uh, walkthrough uh, for the Display Manager interface, actually. And uh, and it, it is uh, as much as I am able to show you with hyperview actually because I'm not an expert of uh, CAE. Right, right. <laughs> so, so you don't have a task at hand that you're trying to accomplish, but you can show us the capabilities of Display Manager. Uh, Dario, I wanted to ask you about the origins of this product. Is, is it that the, did the customers come to you and say, "Look, our our users are often far away." from the supercomputing resources, and can you help us? Is that how it started? Not exactly like that. Uh, they, are, they felt they were not uh, a, uh, away from the computing resources, but from the data. Ah. Uh, I mean, connecting to uh, a computing resource and uh, submitting some, some data is easy, and that can be accomplished in multiple ways. One is through Compute Manager, uh, which is the other product from the switch. And if you have both Display Manager and Compute Manager installed, you could switch one from in between those. And actually, you could submit uh, uh, stuff to, to your computing resource. What customers felt um, away from is, is the data. It takes time to uh, produce the data, and it takes even more time to transfer the data. So imagine that you can produce uh, simulation results by, I don't know, I'll, like 10 megabytes per second of results. And then it's not likely that you have like 10 megabits uh, of connection between your computing resource and your desktop. And so you have to download all the data, open it, look what's inside, and then maybe make a small modification and pull it again inside a computing resource to make the next step. Uh, or might be another common problem is that you have long running uh, applications. Um, but you know, the CD world and the, the scientific world is, is a strange place. There are a lot of different things going on. So you might have something that it is not really uh, 
a high performance application, but it is just something that has uh, a graphic interface and that you have to keep running for for a very long time for it to uh, produce its results. So it's either that you never shut down your laptop, your workstation, or you simply connect to uh, a virtual desktop somewhere out there in the cloud, launch your application, and come back in like a week to see what happened. And your application is there, whatever happens to your own workstation and, and laptop. Um, and so these are, I mean, the, the the, the cases that we have. And of course, collaboration. I mean, in nowadays world, it's common to have people scattered across multiple sites and in need to see what each other is doing. And uh, if, imagine if two people are uh, working on, on the same large data set, it is more convenient for them to just stream the application interface, just to stream a view on the data rather than add two separate copies of the data and figure out who is updating what and when and, and so on. So it is very convenient to have all this centralized in, in a single environment. Right. And of course. Yeah, yeah. So, so like in this case, this truck model might have been tens of gigabytes that would have taken a long time to bring to your, your computer there in Italy all the way from, from Germany. Right, but you're you're yeah. able to uh, interact with that information um, uh, almost like it was local. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the objective. Uh, we yep. really want the user experience to be like they were using something local. They should not uh, perceive the fact that the data is is far away. That they have something in between uh, they and and the data. And uh, they, they should just be, uh, they should just have a very easy way to access to the function that they need to perform. In this case, look at what happens to this truck when it gets a call. Yeah, yeah. Well, Dario, this is very interesting. Um, I want to thank you once again for uh, coming on the show today. Thank you very much, Rich. Hey, it was my pleasure. It was a pleasure for me to be here. Okay. All right, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.